Yeah, yeah. Hello, YouTubers. All right. So my biggest question I ever get ever is where do you get your stuff? Where do you find all these things? I mean, these are cool. Where do you, where do you find all this stuff? Well, let me first say everywhere. No joke. I find it on the side of the road. I find it in free piles. I find it stuff people drop it off for me. And it just comes to me. It's been a year-long process of putting the word out and letting people know that I provide free service to pick up and do things. And they're more than happy to give me their stuff so that not only do they not have to pay to get rid of it because that's really expensive, but also a lot of people really do like the fact that, you know, it's not going to end up in a dump. And it's somehow going to end up back into the process of life and not just end up in a scrap heap somewhere. So that's how I get my stuff. And let's break it down. So here we are at my intake table. Yeah, it's a little messy, but follow me. So you start with anything, anything. You see something free on the side of the road? Pick it up. DVD players, set-top boxes, old computers, old electronics, satellite dishes, CB radios, more set-top boxes, old radios. Anything you can imagine. If it plugs in or runs on batteries, there's a chance that there's some form of precious metal in it helping it along its way. There's a few rules of thumb to this, and I've discovered some of them along my way, but you're gonna just need to kind of do your own research. Like I said, I've spent hundreds and hundreds of hours following other prominent YouTubers. I'm not sure what the proper etiquette is or if I can use their names or not, but I'm pretty sure if you're already looking at my video, you've already seen theirs. But, so this is my intake table, and let's go from there. First and foremost, a lot of people pass these up because they don't think they're worth it, and that's fine. They're worth it to me. Now, you got to ask yourself, is it worth your time and your effort to get the stuff out of these? If the answer is yes, then by all means. If the answer is no, come find me, drop them off. you got to pay 10 bucks at the dump to get rid of them, or more, depending on when you're watching this. So, you all don't want to pay that money? Bring them on to me. So, the first year... No matter what, I realize that it's pretty much a wash. You're going to try to get the word out. You're going to do your best. There's going to be some down times. You're going to have some people that are really going to look at you weird. But that's okay. Then you're also going to get some angry people that are going to look at you and be like, why do I want to give you my stuff for free? And that's fine. But the one thing I can suggest, don't pay for your e-waste. Don't do it. At least start now. It'll be a wash of money. You're going to end up learning some hard lessons really quick that's going to cost you money. So the first year, just collect this stuff because guess what? If you're able to process it and get it organized, then at least you know the gold is there. It's not going nowhere, but you can do some research and save yourself some time, frustration, and money. Watch other people on YouTube. Do other things like that. Let them make the mistakes, unfortunately, so that you can learn from them. So with that being said, organization is a must. doesn't matter if you have a basement, a closet, or in my case, I so happen to be lucky enough to have a very large shop to work in. I'm blessed with this. So I have the capability of storing a lot more stuff. But, organization. If you can't break your pile down and it just keeps building up and building up, you're just going to end up with a pile of junk and frustrated and overwhelmed. So, do your research, collect your stuff, break it down and organize it. So yeah, there's a lot of different ways to make money on e-waste. It really is lucrative. And fun if this is something you like to get into. And if you're like me and you found yourself medically retired and you still want to do something, this is what I found. Like I said, I spent many, many, many hours researching and just collecting and doing as best I could to figure it out. And I still don't know everything yet. Every day you're going to learn something new. So the first way you can make money on 
e-waste is just bringing it to your scrapyard. So if you got a pile like me and you really don't want to take it apart, bring it to your scrapyard. They may give you, you know, 10 cents a pound, 15 cents a pound, something like that. Some things have batteries in them, you know, like that right there, U UPC, I think that's called. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. You know, all this stuff. It'll bring you a little bit of value to it. But me, I live about an hour away from my scrapyard. So it just doesn't make sense. And then you have places that you can go and you can break all this down. You can send all this to online buyers and stuff like that. And that works, but not for me. The amount of shipping it costs makes no sense in my world to send all this stuff out. It just doesn't. And then sometimes you get, you know, if you don't have the right sorting and you don't have the right contact with them and it just, it can get difficult. But if that's for you, then by all means, they'll buy all this stuff. Per pound, they'll give you a price. It's really easy. You box it up and you ship it out. But for me, I don't really want to give up my stuff because I have a process. So that's out of the question for me. Now again, if you're going to sell your boards and whatever else, don't go buy my sorting. This is me and my grades for my particular processes and what I want to do with them. This is no reflection of how you should sort any of this stuff out if you're going to sell it or anything like that but for me i sort out slot cards hard drive boards you know these guys are pretty nice and we'll break them down a little more but you got gold fingers and some stuff on them there they're pretty easy and you got motherboards and again you know laptops they're all right. They got some hidden features and stuff in here we'll talk about later. But you get all kinds. You get laptop boards. You get, you know, metal socket ones. And this guy. Eh, they're fighting with me. So metal sockets. Those are cool. But the newer they are, the less stuff they have on them, unfortunately. These chips right here look really nice. They got all oh, shiny little bit of gold on them. There ain't much in them. You can if you want to. But that's not for me. And you get other ones, like these smaller computers, again, they got their flip chips on them and stuff. And eh, they got a little bit. They're fun. You might as well throw them in your stuff. And you get on to things like your slot processing, you know, computers. Uh, they get a little more in there. So, so the vintage stuff, you know, they got the gold BGAs and, well, gold corner, whatever everybody calls them. I don't know. I just, I call Lake Superior an ocean. So if that helps you. And I've got my high grade. I don't come across a lot of them. But when I do, oh boy, when I do, they got a lot of stuff on them. So I like to take a little more caution and care when I pull them apart and do a little research. Because there's, there's a lot of things on these guys. You know, there's a lot of usable chips you can sell. There's a lot you can break down. And we'll get into that later. And I got my mid-grades. I call these mid-grades because, yeah, they still, they still got gold corners. They got all these. They got flat packs. And uh, they come out of TVs. I mean, believe it or not, people walk by TVs all the time and they're like, oh, it's just a TV. No, sucker's got gold in it. If it's worth it to you, then it's worth it. If it's not, then just go ahead and sell them online. I got another one. It's, ooh, this one's heavy. As soon as, I just gotta leave him right there. As soon as I get my bins filled, I process them and I go through. So that's kind of my step. I fill a bin. Oh, you don't belong there. You come back here. I fill a bin, I process it. Fill a bin, process it. Fill a bin, process it. Fill a bin, process it. You get the idea. You come down here and you got gold plugs. I mean, yeah, we'll look into that later. And you got your, you know, your CD tape drives. Yeah, I come across a tape drive every once in a while. I live on the edge of the world, literally. So I'm kind of on the edge of old technology fading out and new technology coming in which is cool because I get to do clean outs of fantastic old equipment. And then I get a bunch of stuff because every day, no matter what, there's hundreds of thousands of dollars spent on new technology that within six months is gonna get thrown away. So just keep on the lookout for them. So here's some more stuff. And yeah, we're just gonna break down. Let's start with these guys. And we'll get these laid out and we'll check them out a little better. But they're gold flashing stuff low-hanging fruit everybody says it's the easiest and yeah it can be all right so my cameraman and my editor told me to keep these under 15 minutes so we're gonna go with that and see how far we get but 
Gold flashboards. I know sometimes it's hard to see. Yeah, look at all that. Just flashed everywhere. It's very thin. Really, really thin. And sometimes it's hard to see, you know. But these are strip boards that come out of out of TVs. That's, that's a little bit of gold right there. Uh, let's see. This came out of an old uh, phone. Literally. Just a little dial. There's all your numbers. Doo -doo -doo, and that's gold flashed. Um, other stuff. Microsoft components. Or like, you know, game systems. I don't know if I could say that word or not. Uh, but gaming systems. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, mice. Believe it or not. Some old school mice got some really good gold plated uh, IC chip legs and stuff. They've got really nice gold plating under there. I don't know. Yeah, there you go. You can see it kind of. Yeah. So, uh, what else? Controllers. Ooh, controllers. People really pass these up and people get angry and throw them up. And they they got gold. They got gold on them. A little, little harder to get to them. But it is there. Uh, what else? Even random. Random little guys. Just random little things. Inside of switches and whatever else. You wouldn't even think to look. But if it's an electronic... And it costs a few bucks. There's going to be some gold in there. And that don't look like much. And it's not. You would be right. But it all adds up. And we got like the track pads on uh, laptops. Yeah, it looks great. Oh man, look at that shine. Yeah, it's gold. Very thin. But it's there. And you got stuff like satellite feed horns. Oh man, look at that. It looks kind of silver in the light. But I rest assured, I know it's gold. And I don't have to prove to nobody. You can just go do your own research. But these. These sit in everybody's front yard constantly. Just sitting there staring at you. Nobody uses them. And so we uh, we collect them up. People are more than happy to give them to me. So that's some places I do find gold flashing. I find other things. Let's see. Do I got one in here? Yeah. This is inside of a set-top DVR box. And you think low-grade board, and yeah, there's there's an IC chip on the back. There's not much, but they got gold pins right inside of them. Right there. You just snip them off, throw them in your bucket. You're good to go. Uh, where else do I find them? I mean, everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere. Yeah, that's not gold flash. I don't know what that's in there for. But that came from a trolling motor. Stacked with some tantalum capacitors. We'll take care of them later. We'll talk about that in another video. And, uh, yeah, this is not everything. This is just the stuff I haven't broke down into its pieces. But, yeah, you can see, you know, it's got gold flashing on it. Really nice. It looks good. There's absolutely not much there. It's really not worth going for most people. But, like I said, you got 100 TVs worth, it adds up. Throw that in your stock pot. Call her good. Wi-Fi cards. Yeah, that's got copper on there, but if you look at that little little antenna connection right there, that's gold. Let's see if we can get on in there. Maybe it'll focus, maybe it won't. Uh, anyways, so that's that's gold. I snip those little guys off, take the wire off, take the plug-ins, and throw them in my stock pot over there. Yeah, if you're in a hurry, that's not a way to do it, but we'll cover that in another video. Here's another example, printer boards. Off of old school, you know, printer, fax, copier, Whatever you want to call them. All oh, those buttons. Not every time, but sometimes those buttons are gold. Other times they're silver. But then you just put that in your silver. And you go on from there. Again, more gold flashing. Uh, this comes out of... Uh, that was a laser printer. And they're on the boards. And Oh, look at that. That's got a nice little exposed IC chip for you guys to see. You see all them little legs in there. All the little gold. My phone sucks. I apologize. But it's... And they exist everywhere. Every day you walk past them all the time and just don't even imagine they exist. So again, my editor told me to keep it down to 15 minutes. So here we are, yeah, yeah. At the end of my videos, I think I'm going to add some random gold to the stock pot. And we're just gonna keep doing that. And as soon as I get 100 subscribers, we're gonna empty that sucker out. Well, we got some pieces, some rando connectors, a bus connector over here by my thumb, and some pieces you find on credit cards and stuff. And we're gonna put that in there. Oh, God, come here, come here. Here we go, we're gonna just put him right in there. All right, guys. Well, I hope you found this informative, enlightening, helpful, and just anything. Hit that like and subscribe button, you guys, and keep up with my videos. Thank you.